Galatians chapter two, uh, chapter five, and verse fourteen. That's where the uh, the theme for this uh, special service is taken from. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. In one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We read in the first service of the story of uh, the, the Good Samaritan who showed love to his neighbor. Three people in that particular parable that Jesus Christ gave. We had the priests, we had the Levites, and we also had the Good Samaritan. Amen. And I say that it was his action that qualified him with the name Good Samaritan. Amen? Amen. Mm. He was good because he did good to somebody or for somebody. The lawyer came before Jesus and was trying to justify himself. Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus Christ gave that parable. A man was going from, Jeri uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho and he was laid on the way by thieves and nobody cared for him. The priest passed by, went to the other side, the Levite passed by, went to the other side, but when the Samaritan came, he saw and he had compassion, he had mercy on the one that was attacked. He was left half dead, that's when he was in coma. And the man took it upon himself to care for the one that was afflicted. I want to say that your love is seen in the way and manner you care for people. Your love is validated via your caring. Via your caring. Do you care for people? The person who cares for people is a loving person. Nursing profession is a caregiving profession. To be a doctor, to be a pharmacist, people who work in the hospitals, they are caregivers. Old people's homes, they are caregivers. Do you understand that? But you and I know that there are some nurses that are more vicious than the devil himself. <laughs> so they, they, are, they, are, they are not doing according to their profession. Amen? Amen. Some nurses will abuse you and you feel like, look, no, there's no need going to the hospital. Especially in the maternity homes where women are supposed to, to deliver. When they need all the care, nurse will shout at them. Who told you to go do it? You are coming again. You are coming again. The next time, you must but they need all the care but you and I know that nurses some nurses there are nurses and there are nurses yes. may every member of the great house mandate so that is in the profession of caregiving really display the love of Christ yes. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ yes. may we display the love of Jesus Christ to humanity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 9, Romans 13, 9, Thee, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not be a false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I said in the first service that if you truly love your neighbor, you will not take your neighbor's wife. You will not commit adultery. If you really love your neighbor, you will not seek to kill, to harm, to injure, to abuse your neighbor. You will not steal what belongs to your neighbor. You will protect the interests of your neighbor. Because the Bible says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It is what you want to see people do for you. That is what you should do for others. Do you want somebody to steal your wife? No. 
So don't steal another person's wife. Do you want somebody to steal your property, your treasure? No. Then do unto others. The Bible says, do unto others as you would wish others to do unto you. Love your neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Leviticus 19.18 Thou shalt not avenge. Somebody has done evil to you. Forgive the person. Don't repay that person. Don't pay that person back. Hallelujah. Amen. Nor bear any grudge. Any grudge simply means any grudge. No small grudge, no big grudge. Don't tell me, oh, you don't know what this person has done to me. No, there's nothing like that. Somebody has harmed you, yes. Go ahead and forgive the person. No bear any grudge against the children of thy people. For thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hmm. There are so many people in church that are carrying people in their hearts. For years, some for months, and some for weeks, and some for days. If you are here and you are still keeping malice, just know that God is not happy with you. You are not a true representative of God. You are not a true ambassador of God. Everyone that hurts you, you are meant to forgive the person. Let the person go. Let the person go. And the moment you let the person go, it shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Love is also seen in your giving. Love is seen in your giving. Just like love is seen in your caring, love is seen in your giving. Love is seen in your giving. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. To validate God's love for us, He gave, gave Jesus Christ very precious gifts. Very precious gift. He gave Him for you and I. That's the essence of Christmas. I know there are people who are celebrating this Christmas not really having a full understanding of the import or the reason for the season. They don't really know. They don't know. And they don't even care to know. Do you know that this Christmas to some people is a season of drinking? I tell you, it's a season of drinking. You want to know why I'm saying this? If you go to a Congo, you will see how people are buying all manner of drinks. It's as if they, they, they must stock their fridges, stock their houses with all manner of drinks. And I know, I know you visit some people and they will take you to their, is it their uh, beer, Mini beer joint? Mini bar. Mini bar. 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 Okay, they have bars in the house. Yeah. They just look at it like, okay, uh, is it champagne you want, anyone you want, just uh, take to your film. Uh, after all, we are celebrating Christmas, we are celebrating Christmas. Just drink, just, just have your feel. Is Christmas a season for drinking? Is it? It's our responsibility to tell the world that the world, the season for Christmas is is not for drinking. It's not for eating. It's not even for wearing new clothes. But I can tell you that some people they will tell you Christmas dress never arrives, and some women are fighting their husband seriously <laughs> for their children. Say Christmas has come. You have not even bought me one rabbit since I married you. Since I married you, since I married you, since I married you, since I married you, since I married you. What have you bought for me? Tell me what you have bought for me. I'm suffering in your house. All the women in the neighborhood, everybody in the estate, they all enjoy themselves. You know, their husbands are buying their things. Which kind of husband be this? Praise the Lord. Amen. Beloved, your husband, whether Christmas or no Christmas, he is obligated to do you good, to care for you. Yes. Husbands that are in the house, don't wait until Christmas before you shower the blessings, yes. shower the gifts. Yes. Do you understand? Yes, sir. If you have been doing that, the woman will not quarrel you and say, Christmas, don't come. 
If you don't come like that and say Christmas, don't go. Is it? But just last week I bought you this. I pray that the Lord will bless all the husbands in the house. So that they will be able to be fully empowered Amen. to do for their wives Amen. and do for their children. <laughs> Somebody is raising his hand and really collecting all the prayers. All the prayers, all the prayers. All the men in the house, stand up, let me bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can raise your hands like this. Let me bless you. Praise the Lord. Because this season, high blood pressure is not your portion. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. There, no, no, that's, that's the truth. There's a way a wife can whine and whine and whine. He said, it you won't kill me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But the Lord will surprise you. Amen. I release the blessing Amen. upon you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the Lord will surprise you in a jiffy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let the doors of heaven be open. Amen. The windows of heaven be open. Amen. The gates of heaven be open. Amen. And let the showers come down Amen. upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. As many of you that believe this prophetic blessing, Amen. by Sunday you will share testimony. Amen. Testimony yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I decree, I decree, I decree, I decree, I decree by the grace of God that your alert will come forth. Yeah. You receive a lot from Saint Potters yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The businesses you have done that they have not paid, I decree that the angels of the Lord will cause them to pay. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. I use Brother Obi as a point of contact. Yes. The promotion he got in the month of December, your promotion has come also. Yeah. Be promoted. Yeah. In your job, be promoted. Yeah. In your business, be promoted. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. The King Ogden, he said the sales that he has never made before. Yes. He has made this month. That is your portion. Yeah. Every businessman in this house, I decree the sales that you have not made before, the contract you have never had before. This month, in the name of Jesus, yeah. I may the Lord crown the year with his goodness for you. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, I like to round up by saying that love is superior. To your superior. Love is superior to all the prophetic giftings that you have. You can speak in tongues, you can prophesy, you can have word of knowledge, you can even have faith to remove mountains. But if you don't have love, you're nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Love is superior to speaking in tongues. So those of you who specialize in, in, in speaking in tongues, you want to greet somebody is in tongues. Just greeting you, you speak in tongues to greet somebody. Legeda, shakaya, pastor, shogeni ya, shakaya, 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 <laughs> if you are speaking in tongues much more than Apostle Paul himself, <laughs> or you don't have love, nothing. Love is superior to prophecy. As you are sitting like this, God can give you revelation. Know whatever is going on in the hearts of people, and then say, Come, this is what God is saying. But if you don't have love, Knowledge you come, what of knowledge you have in Boku. Love is superior to your ability to move or remove mountains. Love is superior. You know why love is superior? Because God is love. So God is superior to all things. Love is superior. Love is superior. The superiority of love is so outstanding. 
Do you know that it takes love to forgive? Hello? It takes love to forgive. So we can say that love is superior to your offering. Because Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 that if you are presenting a gift unto God and your brother has something against you or you have something against your brother, drop that gift and go and reconcile without your brother. After you have reconciled, come to church or come to the altar and make your presentation. That means that you must have love to forgive, to reconcile.